Good morning and welcome to the Transportation Information Mapping System or TIMS webinar. My name is Paula Hyman from the Ohio LTAP Center and I'll be your technical support for today's webinar. Just a couple items. Um, if you have questions throughout the presentation, please put those into the uh, questions pod and our presenter will address your questions um, as she sees those. I just want to thank you in advance for your participation and I'm going to pass things off to Miss Katie Robertson. Katie? Thank you, Paula. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, I want to start off wishing everyone a happy GIS day. I think that this week is National Geography Awareness Week, and this day in particular is when we celebrate all things geographic information systems. So it's a good day to have a webinar. Um, we're gonna go through ODOT's uh, Transportation Information Mapping System, and you should be seeing the homepage right now. Um, I'm going to step back one minute and take you to ODOT's homepage, transportation.ohio.gov. Uh, this homepage has changed um, fairly recently, so I was looking this morning to see how we could still access TIMS from this new homepage. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's a link for map resources. And here you'll get links to um, several, several different portals, um, including a link to TIMS directly. And I was happy to see you can also view um, the paper state map from the website. So that's another uh, one of the products that we make here at ODOT um, in my department, in my office. And um, that was really fun to work on. So that's a good thing to look at on GIS Day. All right, but let's get back to TIMS. ODOT's web mapping portal, where you can discover information about Ohio's transportation system, create maps, and share information. Our goal is to bring you better data so you can make better decisions. <laughs> That's my little jingle. Um, so the application is divided into pages, and we're gonna step through each of these pages today, spending most of our time in the Create a Map, the main mapping page. Um, before we navigate away from the home page, I wanna point out two links in the footer. We have the help link, which will give you a PDF user guide um, that will walk you through all of the tools and um, how to do searches and navigate around the site. So if you leave the webinar and um, remember that there's something you wanted to do but couldn't quite remember the details, this is a really good resource. And then our contact link um, is where you can always find a link to this email address. And any emails sent to this uh, address will go to myself and several other team, team members. And we try to get back to you as soon as possible, um, usually within the same day. And you're welcome to email um, any issues you're seeing with the site, like technical issues, or uh, any questions about the data that we publish through the site. Or if you have any requests on something that is not in TIMS and you would like to see it, um, we might not have all the answers right here in our office of technical services, but um, we can figure out who to bring in to help you answer those questions. Okay, now I wanna get back to the home screen. And of course there's the home link in the footer, but you can also click the Tim's icon in the title bar. And uh, we'll just go in order. So we'll start with this project search page. So of course the backbone of all we do at the Department of Transportation um, is managed with our projects and uh, you'll hear PIDs a lot, like we have the shortcut to search by PID, project ID. Uh, so we have this page to help navigate through that data and it's really designed to drill down and get to just one or two projects. Um, you can see that I was doing some filters earlier this morning and my browser has saved those values. And you'll see that it's automatically populating a list of projects at the bottom. And we can change the number of records that we see at a time. So I'm gonna switch this to five, just so that it can fit this footer into the screen. 
And you can see that we have over 74,000 project records uh, coming through this project um, search page. And this is pulling data from our uh, project management system called Ellis. And every night it goes out and pulls um, all of the records from Ellis. So every day you should be seeing um, the most up-to-date information. And Ellis holds project information back to 2003. So when we're seeing 74,000 entries, um, that is all of the project information back to 2003. And you'll see that one PID can have multiple records here. And that is because one PID can um, represent work happening in multiple locations. So we can see this project uh, in Medina County was on state route, included work on state route 18 between these um, log posts, county township log, the beginning point um, along the roadway where that work begins, and then the county township log end log point of where the road ended on that section of roadway. Okay, so let's filter some of this data. Let's select these. And first we can limit to um, District 3. And we could limit to, um, let's pick on Ashland County today. I, I think that all of the mapping systems expected to have today off as a holiday. So things are running just a tiny bit slow. Um, you'll see that it's trying to populate this drop down list. Um, and I'll just try to be mindful as we click through today so we're not just staring at the spinning circle too much. Um, we can also pick a primary work category. And if you notice before, I had it set to vegetative maintenance. And I know that there are some current projects um, in Ashland County that are primary work category vegetative maintenance, but we see that they're not showing up here. And in case you didn't notice, sometimes um, a project can be logged in Ellis with its recorded county actually equal to the district. It's a district-wide project. So that's why district is an option in the drop-down list for county. And you'll see that got us to um, 400 projects. And again, that's all of going all the way back to 2003. So let's put a fiscal year filter to get an idea of what's happening this year. That got us down to 29 projects. And um, before I had set that, I wanted to point out we had some records showing where the route and log points were empty. And um, sometimes a project record can be entered into Ellis without the location information. So obviously we won't be able to map those. They show here on the project information page because on the back end of this page, it's just tabular data, spreadsheet data. And then when we send it to the, the map page, um, we're using this location information. So I could, um, if I wanted to send all 29 entries, I would have to select each one of them again because there's so much, such a large data set for a web application. We want it to respond quickly. So it's really geared towards narrowing down to one or two records. But I could select as many as I want. I could export those out um, as Excel or as a um, GIS file format. Or I could send them over to our Create a Map page by clicking this button. And we'll do that in a minute. Um, if I want to get more information about one specific record, I can click the View Details uh, icon to the far left. And hold on, I want to make sure I don't lose my place. I'm going to right click, open a new tab. This will take you to the project information page. So this page is taking all of the attribute information that we pull in um, from Ellis and just displaying it in a way that's easier to read. So it has it spread out over the page and organized into sections. 
um, this is a good place to go to quickly get a link to the project plans. And this will open our uh, digital paper web application managed by the Office of Contracts. And um, we have noticed that for some people, the first time they click a link from within TIMS, it will open this page, but it will take you to like a home page where it won't populate. And we're not sure why that's happening yet, but we have found that if you just um, close the tab and then click again, that second time, it will get you to that um, document link. So if we want to view those plans, we can click this icon over to the right. It will download as a PDF. And so that's a very quick way to get access to those project plans. Okay. Additionally, you can get more information um, about this specific project directly in, in Ellis or the web um, portal for Ellis by clicking this view in Ellis. And you have to give this a second, but it will load. There you go. Um, so you can navigate through this system. I don't know a lot about working through this Elledge Proj system, but again, if you have any questions, um, you're welcome to email us and we can uh, bring in the, the right people to answer those questions. Okay, are we ready to go to the map? If you view in map, um, it will open this create a map page. Let's step back and see if I've missed anything here. Oh, uh, when you're looking at your results table here on the project search page, you can sort any of these rows just by clicking on the header. Here's an example of a record that um, does not have any location information. So if I selected it and tried to view it in map, nothing would show up. Um, you can also filter by using this search box and this search box will search anything um, in any of these um, fields that are or columns that are visible. So let's see if I want to see if there's anything on a specific roadway I can use um, this format. You'll see that all of our route numbers are um, five characters long with with leading zeros. So I can see if there's anything on 71 um, by using that format. If I search just 71, it would still get them, but it would also return any records where uh, 71 was in the log point field or maybe in the pit itself. So knowing that is a good shortcut. All right, so we've got four entries on 71 in District 3. Let's select these and then click View and Map. So it has brought us to our create a map page and um, it's created this results layer, a temporary layer that is mapping just those four records that we sent from the project information page. And you can see that they are populated um, in the results table below. So let's get just a basic overview of, of all the aspects of this um, of this mapping page. So on the left, we'll call this our um, uh, tools pane. Well, each and it's, we have our toolbar. Let me figure out what words I'm saying. And um, in the left pane, so as we select options along the toolbar, it will refresh what we're seeing in the pane. So we have list uh, set visible layers where we can navigate through all the layers and turn them on and off. And as you turn layers on, um, the symbols, the legend will update with each layer that you have turned on. So we'll flip back and forth through that today. We have um, find location tools, which are tools to help you just zoom in to certain areas. You can zoom to an address, a coordinate, um, a log point that the NLF ID and those CTL beginner end logs along the roadway and areas which will be boundaries like county and district. So the identify features tool um, will let you, you activate it and you get the crosshairs icon 
you can click on any record in the map and view these attributes in the pane. And you'll see that this is all the same information that we're seeing in the results table, just a different way of displaying it. Then we have some tools that we'll step through later. Um, some tools to help you filter and get a subset of an overall data set. We'll go through those. And um, some tools to add your data and view it in TIMS alongside all the other TIMS data. Okay. Um, so we have this left side pane, the uh, list layers pane, and then we have the results table pane at the bottom. And um, if you came to the create a map page, Um, without sending records over from project search page. It would open like this with the with the results pane empty, results table empty. Um, so if you're not using that, you can minimize that. You could also minimize the pane on the left side. Um, and then within the map window itself, we have some basic zoom in tools, get back to the full extent, and the small toolbar at the top right of the corner um, is where you can set a base map. And um, once we're zoomed further into a small area, we can also turn on the Ohio Statewide Imaging Program, the aerial um, photographs, to get more detail about that area. We can print what's visible in the map window, and that will just be um, a basic view. It won't include the legend, um, but if you just need a, a quick way to print what you're viewing. And you can generate a URL, and um, this URL will include the area that you're zoomed into and any layers that you have turned on. So um, I'll try to remember to show that again later. Okay, so if we wanted to drill down to those current projects um, in District 3, again, um, a different way from the map page, let's show how we could do that. So we have some layers for projects. We have multiple ways of viewing. We can view um, all of the projects in the system. And I'm probably zoomed out too far to have turned that on right now. Um, but you'll see it's divided between points and lines. So if the project contains um, both a begin and end log point, and that will represent a section along the roadway, then we map it as a line. If it is a, a structure, usually um, a bridge or a culvert project, um, we will only have one location along the roadway. So we map that as one point. If we wanted to filter down and only view projects in the next four fiscal years or previous fiscal years by district work plan um, or by current project, and that's what we're going to do um, here in just a minute. And then there's the project history layer that contains information um, from before 2003, I believe. So let's first start with our with our Zoom tools, and um, we will show. Just the basic, we're gonna zoom into, um, you see we could do a district or county. We can clear that um, highlight symbol from the map. And I'm gonna zoom it in just a little bit more. So when I come back over here and turn on my current projects, I can see um, what projects are in construction um, at this time. So we want to get information about one of these records. We activate our identify tool and get those attributes in the um, result in the identify pane. And you'll see it has all that information that we saw on the project details page, like the links to the contracts. And you'll see the construction dates. Um, it's going to be pulling from these to determine if it is a current project. 
And where I clicked, um, if there had been multiple uh, records, then I would, here, let's show, if we turned on next pool for school years and used our identify tool, you'll see that we have results from both our current projects, the one record, and next four fiscal years, there are four records and we can flip through them like this. Okay, so that's pretty easy to catch on to, how to use that identify tool. Um, let's show how we could get those records um, populated into the results table again. And for that, we'll have to use these filter data tools. So we could, um, again, just like we zoom to a geography, we could um, select the current projects that are within a county. And you'll see that I got seven features um, and we had the four vegetative maintenance projects that we were looking at on the project search page. And you'll see this time um, we have multiple primary work categories. So again, just like the project search page, you can sort on any of these um, by just clicking the column header. You can use the search tool. Let's see if we want to use that same route number format. You'll see it's automatically applied that filter. I like scrolling too much. It makes things a little dizzy, but I was looking for the road information so you can see lots of attributes. Here we go. And then if you want to clear that, just delete the characters that you've typed in the search. So if I wanted to export these um, seven features, I could do that from the results table. I could do Excel, KMZ, Shapefile, or Geo Database. And the way that works um, is you select an option and it is compiling and creating that file on the server. And once that's done, the download button will activate. And then you will, if you click the download button, you will get a, um, a zipped folder that contains those files. Okay, um, let's do a different kind of search. So say we wanted to search by um, those attributes and you'll see um, it's remembering that last search. Um, so we wanna reselect our current projects and let's make some filters. So let's do district is three. And let's add another one for um, primary work category is, and um, you'll see in these drop-down lists that you can type to filter. So that's another great shortcut. And throughout all of district three, oh, you know what, because, um, what filter did I have on the project search page that's not here? Current project in construction. I would have expected the four records, but you know, I don't think well while I'm talking on the mic. So if you guys caught it, then uh, go ahead and put it in the, in the chat box and um, tell me where I went wrong. Okay, um, and while we're in the filters, there's one more way to populate that results table. And that is to draw a graphic on the map. So again, you'll see now I have two of these results layers each time I um, um, do a search and get results in the results tab. It also is creating a layer, something to remember. All right, so there's a couple of ways that we can draw a shape. Let's do a polygon. And my, Activate the tool by clicking draw, and then over in the map, follow the prompts. Double click to end. Then click search. 
and it got 40 features that intersected that shape. Okay, so let's clear some of that. Go back to our Set Visible Layers tab. And um, these will be remembered by your browser session. You can turn them off. You can even delete them. But I find that um, for these webinars, as I'm going back and forth between pages, uh, they seem to pop back up again. So I'll probably just reset the whole page. Um, it is useful to know that you can switch what you're seeing in the results table by selecting Show Attributes. Okay. But let's just make sure things don't get too confused and reset back to the main page where our results table is empty. And we probably won't use that again in today's webinar, so I'll go ahead and minimize that. And let's spend some time exploring all of this data that we have published. Um, so I'm gonna turn on our current projects again and I'll just manually zoom in um, to our area in Ashland County. And um, now let's look at assets, a very big list of um, data sets that represent assets that we inventory and inspect and are responsible for along the roadways. So um, of course we could look at what bridges are going to be in this area of our work. And we'll see those labels are going to be the structure file number. Again, we can use our identify tool to inspect a bridge and see all the information that's available there. Um, the bridge data set recently went through a redevelopment and um, some of the uh, attribute names have changed and we tried to include a smarter um, field names to make it easier to navigate. You'll see down at the bottom, there are links now to SMS reports. A lot of our data sets um, include links in the tables, so it's always worth exploring to see what resources. Um, so that link will automatically download this report, Bridge Inventory and Appraisal Report. Also a link to um, photos, if those are available. I'm trying to click on every link because we will run out of time. Um, let's see, as I turn layers on again, they're gonna be shown in the legend. We can view outfalls along this section of roadway, if there were any. Safety barriers, four hole locations, um, and as you can see, if you were zoomed out, um, the, you know, the map gets very cluttered very quickly because we have so many assets. So let's see, take a look at a sign. That is one of our um, collector assets that's managed through our collector program. And so um, conduits and signs, um, um, any of the collector data sets will usually include a link to PathWeb. And that's another system that ODOT uses to um, collect information along the roadways. We have um, those very fancy vans with all the cameras and it even scans the roadway as it drives along. So many of our assets include a link directly to the location within PathWeb. And there will usually be links to um, any photos that were collected what, um, by the field crew when they were in the field collecting or, or inspecting. So we have inventory. And we are trying to implement um, smarter links now. So that link will only generate if there is actually a photo. I should look into that because it should just open directly. So let's see if we can find another one. Oh, okay, uh, one more look at the legend to see how that's changing again, just to really drive that home. Um, let's see, something that I can probably show you a photo. 
And if we don't have success with this one, I'll just move on. All right, so we've got our under drain outlets. And let's see, there we go. So this is how it will look. Um, there you go, that's the photo taken in the field. Okay, let's see, it's 9.30. We try to stay on track. Um, we've gone over turning layers on and off. Um, taking a look at what we have under the assets category. Boundaries, of course, just gonna be your reference polygons. We have some environmental data sets. Um, we also have a map viewer specifically for environmental uses. So I want to make sure we get time to look at that today. Um, and in that map viewer, you will see these plus a lot more um, layers. We looked at our projects. Of course, we have our roadway information. Um, the road inventory is going to be like the master um, master data set for all the attributes along the roadway or that describe the roadway. And then we have it um, filtered out to a couple of layers, just road segments that um, you can view by functional class or if it's a part of the HPMS system, the NHS system, scenic byways. Okay, I could go on for an hour just about, just trying to cover all the data. And then we have, um, crash information. A lot of you might be familiar with the GCAT tool. That is also um, a part of TIMS, but we do training webinars um, specifically for GCAT to help folks learn how to navigate through that system. And we have some pared down version of that crash data because that is an incredibly large um, database. So we filtered to just the three previous years. Um, because 2020 was such an odd year, we are still showing 2019, 18, 17. And um, it's just a limited number of the attributes that we show. But we do have that available. Okay. Let's see, let's make sure we cover some of these tools under the gear icon. Just some basic map mapping tools to help. Um, you can measure a distance. So if I wanna know general idea, I can get miles. And once you get that distance populated, you can change your units. So it also acts as a uh, pretty handy way to convert units. Also, um, kind of hidden in this tool is an, the ability to report state plane coordinates, eastings and northings. Just click anywhere and you'll get that information up here. Um, area, for area, you would draw a polygon similar to how I did to select my graphic earlier. You can draw a shape. Um, if for whatever reason you just wanted to make an annotation. And this would print if you use the print button from this page. Um, and that will remain while you're in this current browser session. Um, once you navigate away from Tim's, that will be cleared out. Or you can clear it there. You can bookmark. Um, so of course you can bookmark in your browser, but it's gonna bookmark the map page. So each time you would go to that page, it's gonna be um, zoomed all the way out to the state. But if say I'm used to um, always zooming into a very specific area, I could create a bookmark that will stay here. This will be saved in your browser. So um, you can navigate back to it until you clear all of your browser history or clear your cookies. Um, that should remain there. And another way to link to PathWeb that we saw the links within um, some of the asset um, attributes. So it looks like nothing has happened sometimes when you when you activate a tool. But if I move my cursor over the map window, you'll see I have the crosshairs icon and that lets you know. Um, I should click over a roadway. and then it will zoom to that location within PathWeb. Oh, 
There we go. Um, I could just explore the area using the tools in PathWeb. And I can get more information about that area oops, uh, with this map channel tool. So in a similar fashion, um, it's activated. You know it's activated because you have the crosshairs icon. I can click anywhere. It doesn't have to be along a roadway. And um, you just click this view map button. It opens this um, like header page. I'm not sure why. But then this page combines multiple mapping views. Um, if I had this icon over a roadway, I think it would also give me this street view. And you can also navigate around with this tool. So that's very handy. Um, a third way that you can view um, photographs or more information about the area is with that OSIP-based map. So the Ohio Statewide Imaging Program is um, managed by the state of Ohio OIT, I believe, and they fly the state on a two-year cycle, and that's why we have OSIP-1 and OSIP-2. I usually just go straight to the best available, and that is a mashup of um, the two years available and whichever is going to be the best quality. You definitely want to be zoomed in quite far when you use this um, because it will take a while to draw. And um, a lot of times I will have this set and I'll be exploring an area and then I'll just close this tab. And uh, when I come back to the page, my browser will have remembered that this is the base map I was using. And I'll just get this uh, white screen spinning and spinning. So if you do ever see that, um, it's good to remember that you can just try switching that base map. Okay. And it's probably a good spot to be zoomed all the way back out. Let's turn some things off. You'll see that um, if you turn a layer on and it's not drawing at the full um, extent, the full extent of all of Ohio, um, it's probably a setting on that layer of the larger data sets like crash, bridge. They will not begin to draw until you've zoomed in far enough for that to be um, reasonable for us to try to draw. Okay, so let's give an example of bringing in your own data set. Um, let's do, say you have a spreadsheet of um, NLF ID and log point locations. It'd be very similar workflow if I had um, a spreadsheet full of addresses or XY coordinates. But we'll do LRS for this example and I usually try to keep some samples handy right here. LRS events. So I chose the file and now I have to tell it to upload that file. And now it wants me to pick the fields. So I will want my CTL begin. Oh, okay. I'm going to just switch it to line events and see if my spreadsheet does have CTL in. I believe those are just going to be points. So. So it is going to um, generate its temporary layer, or I'll do it wrong and it won't show anything. There's a known issue, issue with effect uploading. I will try it one more time. Don't want to. Um, Waste too much of your time if it's not going to work. Maybe my spreadsheet is too large. Again, I'll pick my NLF ID and I will choose my log point field. Again, it's still showing that I don't have 
Okay, I'm going to look into that as soon as our webinar is over today. Uh, but let's try one with addresses. Hopefully it's not an issue with the upload tool altogether. Geocode. All right, there's my address. There is my city. Fingers crossed. Okay, so that's how it should behave. Um, you'll see it's created the layer, it's drawn the shapes on the map, and it's populated that results table. Um, you may notice this as uh, the locations of our district headquarters. So that's a good example to use. And then while it's in TIMS, you have all that same functionality. You can search, you can export, um, you could use the filter data tools. Just note that I believe the, the limit is 5,000 records um, for, for using all of these tools at, um, when you're bringing in layers into TIMS. Okay. Um, so if anyone has any questions, they are welcome to drop those in the chat pod. I do see that there's a question over there. But I can't get my little windows to open large enough. So, um, oh, here we go. Do you need to have PathWeb installed or any special logons? For PathWeb, I believe you do not. Um, you could open TIMS now while you're following along. You could even open it on a mobile device and um, see if it does give you access. I believe there shouldn't, there shouldn't be any problems with that. It's a public facing um, website. Okay, so let's make sure that we touch these other pages and then we'll spend some time on one or two of the map viewers. So our data download page. This is pre-packaged data in all of in those four formats. So if it's a data set that's updated nightly, like projects um, or bridges, each night on the server, we pre-package um, that data and then zip it so it's uh, manageable to download. And you can pick as many as you like and it will download them all together. Each data set will be zipped, and then if you have multiple data sets, they will again be combined and zipped into one overall folder. Excuse me. If you have questions about data sets, you don't know what an attribute um, represents, you don't know how often a data set is refreshed, uh, that's what our data glossary page is for. So the list of all of the data sets is in the drop-down list at the top. And again, you can filter by typing. Once you pick a data set, it's going to populate the table below with all of those attributes. Um, it will show you the field alias, and this is what you should be viewing um, in the map page, like if you use the identify tool. The actual column name, which you may get if you download um, as a CSV. I think that we have recently uh, updated that to download with the alias names, but for reference, those are here as well. The type, uh, the data type that's in that field and a brief description. So we try to uh, provide information on the codes that are um, shown in the fields, but um, we do have a character limit here on the description tab. So if you're not able to get the full description or it doesn't answer your question, guess what? You can always email us. These links that generate, um, you'll, you'll see the link is there for every single record, but the link is actually describing the overall data set. So if I hover over the question mark, it's telling me that the bridge data set is the inventory of all Ohio bridges carrying or going over public streets and highways. So that's a brief description of the overall data set and then uh, when it was last refreshed and how often is refreshed. And then if this middle link is activated, um, that will usually get you to another web page for um, the office with an ODOT that is responsible for that data. So here we see that it's getting us to the Office of Structural Engineering. Okay, um, you can export this 
as a CSV on this page. And the same behavior that we saw with the um, export tools on the create a map page, you click export, it's generating that file on the back end and then the download button will activate. I'm not actually gonna click the download button. Okay, um, our standard PDF maps page. We have a lot of uh, offices that let, that have a need to generate a quick PDF, um, usually centered around project data. So if we wanna see construction season um, for Ashland County, we can choose our base map, um, we can choose our format, and then there's some different layouts that we can choose from, portrait or landscape, and then you can choose the size. And the difference in generating the maps from this page versus just clicking the print button on the create a map page is we have uh, layout templates defined. Uh, so when it does create this map, it's gonna include a description of the layers and the legend, um, more information. So it's, it's a more formal map. So here's an example of that. So for this current construction season, all the projects within that county. Okay, uh, so the themes that we have available, annual construction work plan, construction season, fiscal year projects, functional classification, mileposts, and multi-year work plan. <clears throat> and then there is the um, shortcut button that will just briefly it'll just bring up that map um, with those layers turned on, what's well, a PDF showing those layers turned on in that area without the, um, the layout, the title and the description at the bottom. All right, so then we have a list of map viewers um, and the functionality of each of these map viewers is gonna be exactly the same as create a map. The difference is the layers that we are publishing in this map. So you'll see it, it looks the same. We have all the same tools available, the results table, um, everything functions exactly the same. But what we see in our list layers is different. So for strategic transportation system, um, that is an initiative here within ODOT and they just want to have these reference layers available. So we have this uh, custom grouping and then we also pulled in the full groupings exactly as you see them on the create a map page for boundaries and roadways. Active transportation, I think, is one that's getting more popular. As we see a lot of growing initiatives there. And um, here you can get information on bike routes. We have the state and US bike route system published um, in the road inventory grouping and create a map. But here we have it broken out and you can view it um, a few different ways. So it's symbolized by the level of traffic stress or by facility type. There you go. And again, the legend will be your quick reference. Um, we have a subset of uh, project data that's just applicable to the active transportation initiative, so safe routes to schools. I turned it on not in that area. Again, the full next four fiscal years, so you can see what projects are happening in your area of interest. Um, we have that crash data uh, combined for all three years and then filtered to just um, pedestrian or bicycle. And then we have some analysis layers uh, that were generated as part of a study that they did. This one's really pretty. It does take a, a minute to draw. But there you go. So um, yeah, we'll have to link you up with those in active transportation or statewide planning and research if you want to understand what this composite analysis represents. But all right, so now let's uh, spend some time in the environmental map viewer. This is one of our largest 
uh, in terms of the number of layers that are published. And you'll see that, again, the map is pretty sure it was supposed to be a paid holiday today, so it's being snoozy as it tries to load all of those layers specific to our environmental map viewer. I did just check this earlier, so I'm not... Let's do one reset. Sometimes this can happen if we've experienced some kind of um, technical difficulty with the layers, like if there was a change in the data and somehow that's not mapping to how we have told it to be published. Um, so there's a chance that um, this may be broken. I'll need to look into it more. But that's a real shame because I wanted to highlight some of, there we go. Okay. Um, so let's start from the bottom. Here we have some easement information. And I'm gonna go ahead and zoom to a small area and hopefully it will think less. Um, so I've gone back up to those zoom tools or find location tools. And when you choose the address, it defaults to the address of ODOT central office here in Columbus, Ohio. So that's what I did there. Okay. So yeah, you can explore a lot of these data sets that we have. One thing to note is that if it's a data set that's only published into a map viewer, it's not included in the create a map page. Um, it's probably not included in our data glossary or data download page. So if you do have questions, again, you can email us and we can um, get information like the metadata or field descriptions, things like that. So we have demographic indicators, blood, information, uh, just the reference boundary, boundaries again, the bike, ground, bike route system again, the full project layers are pulled in, and then a big list of all of the uh, environmental specific data sets. So we have our uh, hydraulic unit code boundaries. We have the national wetland inventory So you see it drew the boundary and it's drawing that label. Here you can see the wetlands that have turned on. Um, mussel streams, all the streams within Ohio that have to be monitored for a specific mussel species, I believe. Any mitigation sites or active landfills in the area. And um, of course, you can turn on any of these filters and then again, or any of these layers, then again, use the filter information. So if I want to know if there are any mitigation sites within a certain county, I can pull those up this way. Okay, let's see, I've got five minutes left. Um, if there is anything that you guys would like me to spend another couple minutes on, drop a note in the chat box. Otherwise, I can think of something quickly that might be of use. We've talked about navigating the project data that you can do through the project search page and the filters included there. We've talked about replicating these filters by using the tools within the map page by turning on projects and then using the filter tools. We showed a couple of different ways to generate those filters either by the attributes um, with the associated table, 
filter by geography, which will select all of those records that are within a county or district or city polygon, or you can draw a shape on the map and um, use that as your polygon to select. Hopefully gave a pretty good overview of all the data that's available. Of course, you'll have to um, navigate through and see. If there's something that you are looking for and you cannot find, you can always search within our data glossary or um, send your questions to us in an email. Um, if you like to download full data sets and um, you're not sure how often you should um, come back to TIMS to get the newest data set, you can go to the data glossary to find out how often that data set is refreshed and the last date that it was refreshed. Um, let's see, I can give another example of some links within the attribute tables. We didn't look at traffic. So I can turn on our traffic layers, use my identify tool. And within here, we can get a link to the MS2 traffic reports. So there you can directly link to that information. And I could spend just an hour making sure that I listed, you know, um, all the links to other systems that you can get to through um, through the different records and their attributes. Um, but just to encourage you to to look, you know, if there's a data set that you're interested in, just dive down and and look and see what's there. Um, let's see. There's anything else? I think I'm gonna call it. <laughs> and we can let you guys and the mapping system have three minutes of your day back. So let's see if um, Paula is here, she needs to do anything to wrap up the session. I am here. Um, we will send out, I just got something to ask about the certificate. So we send a follow-up email um, pending that this did record successfully and you will receive a certificate from our office within five to seven business days. That does not come from me. It will come from our office though. So just look out for that via email. And that's it. Good, um, good job, Katie. Thank you, Paula. Um, I hope everyone's still awake and I hope you enjoy some maps today <laughs> and have a good day.